My name is Andy Nelson, I'm the chair of the Missoula Democratic Party, and we have a special guest tonight, uh, Commissioner Josh Schlotnick, and he'll be talking all about property taxes. So here's Josh. So it was hard to park, and I was thinking, it, it, was it the depot or was it property taxes? <laughs> no, no. Um, this stuff I'm about to talk to you about is really complicated, not intellectually challenging, but complicated. There's lots of moving parts, and it's going to be my mission for the next 45 minutes to try and make it as understandable as possible. To that end, anyone who wants to pull your stuff your seating apparatus closer, it's going to be easier. Just think about when you're sitting in the back of the room in college, what you get out of it compared to when you're sitting in the front. So I'm ready. I bet Don doesn't know what I'm even talking about tonight. <laughs> she runs the place. She gets it wherever she wants. Okay, so if you want to scoot, if you don't want to scoot, it's on you. Okay, there we go. Scoot so in. And the other, other rule, other uh, sort of Somebody says Brittany's house is worth $500,000 and the 
tax rate for residential property is 1.35%, then 1.35% times $500,000 is the taxable value of Brittany's house. Does that make sense? Can you uh, back up to you how they assess the residents? It's square footage. It's square footage and where it is. And there's probably a handful of other pieces to the algorithm. I'm sorry, I don't know. The computer knows. The computer knows. But the state, and I'm going to throw them under the bus later, but not for this. <laughs> so the state is quite sympathetic and generous and open-minded that when you reach out to them and say, hey, you said I have a finished basement and I don't, they're like, oh, we're sorry about this. So is that, I'm sorry if I can't. Okay. But it's basically the physical details of your house. So the algorithm, though, is that all those different factors, are they laid out in statute somewhere that is put in? You know, I don't know if it's statute or if it's policy. Okay. Mr. Thane, do you know? It's based on comparable sales. So they look at your square footage and sales compared to similar properties in your area that have sold recently and what they sold. And, for. and this gentleman was wondering if that was language in Rock and Rock's car in a statute or is comparable it in policy? Sales, I believe it's in statute. So it's in statute. And if there aren't enough comparable sales, there's a fallback method. Yeah. So there you go. What's the fallback? It's, it's going to be some. It's going to be something like your square footage and where it is, and the computer is going to do its best guess. But if you feel like they got it wrong, you can reach out to the state and appeal. Well, but don't they just send you a, a like? I, they're wrong on how many bathrooms I have. Sure. So, but they just sent me a paper that I need to fill out that I have to then estimate what my house is worth. And I don't know what my house is worth. There are two versus three bathrooms or three versus four. I don't know. Just make a low number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a form available online and it's called an AB26. Okay. And you just fill it out and it goes to the local tax appeal board and they're the first ones to deal with it right here. Right. Okay. That's good. And, and we've tried to be swift and, and user friendly. My friend Tyler Manette, our clerk and recorder, does a great job in his job and we, we move it along. And you only have 30 days after you receive your reappraisal notice in order to file an AB26. Yeah, I know. I, I got it like a week ago. I'm still looking at it. Okay. We got the acreage in there? Acreage? It depends. Um, if you have farmland or development land, yes. If it's just a house lot, no. Okay. Okay, so we got the reappraisal cycle. Every two years, the state does, appraises all the real estate in the county, and then they do a little math. They take the value of your real estate and they multiply it by this tax rate. 1.35 for residential, 1.89 for commercial, and there's a whole bunch of other flavors of real estate. And they do that, and they come up with a taxable value. The next thing they do is take all of those taxable value numbers and add them up. All those taxable value numbers get added up, and then you divide that number by 1,000. That's one mil. Okay, so state appraises all the property in the county. Each property gets multiplied by its tax rate according to which type of property is residential, commercial, industrial, etc., to get a taxable value. Add up all those taxable values and divide by a thousand, and that equals one mil. And a mil is a unit of taxation. But it's an unusual unit of measure. It's not like a mile. We could say, how many miles is it to Butte? And it's the same answer every time, right? But the value of a mill changes. It makes it slippery and a little bit hard to deal with. Okay, here's a pop quiz question, and I've given you the answer to one of it, but the other answer I didn't give you, so we'll see how it works, and you can't say it. <laughs> Why does the value of a mill change every two years? Everything gets reappraised. Exactly, perfect, exactly. And in Western Montana, which, which direction does that always go? Yeah. Historically so. Okay, there's one other piece to that answer. Why else does the mill value change? Reappraisal cycle. All the real estate gets reappraised, so we're talking with new values. It means new taxable values. There's another piece, too. What you vote on? So that's not that, no. <laughs> that's not it. New construction? Yes, you said that. Well done, well done. There's new buildings that 
didn't exist the last time. So those two things, newly taxable, plus the change in the real estate market, means the value of a mill changes. So when the county, or the city, or both, depending on where you are, is preparing to look at how much money they have available to tax, they do a little math. The number of mills times the value of a mill. So you got the value of a mill, right? Yes? <laughs> okay, thank you. But the number of mills. So the number of mills is really important. Imagine you are in another country. Who's been to another country in the recent past? Oh, there are these people. Where'd you go? Peru. Peru, awesome. What is, what's the currency in Peru? Okay, who's been to another country where they know the currency? France. France, and you were here in euros. So I imagine you're in France, and you are thinking about going to a certain museum, and you look it up on your phone, and it says, oh, entrance is six euros. And in your mind, you gotta go, okay, how many dollars are in a euro? And how many euros are they charging me to get in? It's a similar deal with mills. How many dollars are in a mill, and how many mills are we using? Does that make sense? The, and the value of a euro, or the so dollars, changes. Goes up and down. The same thing, the mill is gonna basically, in Western Montana, it just goes up. So, the number of mills the city or county decides to put to use means a ton. That's half the equation. Number of mills times the value of a mill. But those number of mills are regulated by the state. Just one question. Yeah. So there was a proposal, right, for the tax rate residential to go like to 0.94 from 1.35. I'm going to get there. That would change the value of I'm, that. I'm totally, if you can hold on, I'll get there. I can't. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'll throw, the whole, I'll throw the whole deal off. Just let me, let me, let me work my way that direction. Just kidding. Okay. So we're still in number of mills. So when you say it's regulated by the state, yes. the state legislature? Yes. 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 So the state legislature has decided there is this thing called a mill cap. This is a ceiling. Bam. We can't levy, we can't put to use any more mills than a mill cap. We hit that cap, that's all we got. And that cap is pretty interesting mathematically. It is the number of mills we used last year plus an, a new amount of mills that is equivalent to half the three-year average of inflation. <laughs> I know, I told you it's complicated. Not because it's intellectually challenging, but just because it's complicated. So the mill cap, the mill cap is we get to use the same amount of mills as we did last year plus an amount of mills that will bring in dollars, an amount equivalent to half the three-year average of inflation. The past, now, the past three years. Yes, yes, absolutely, yes. Now, this is a pretty awkward situation to be in. So, myself and my friends Dave and Juan make up our Board of County Commissioners, and we're responsible for the budget and the taxation for Missoula County. We have to buy all this stuff. We have 60 sheriff's deputies. Each of them has a cruiser, and they drive all over the county. Our county's like as big as Delaware. It's, they put a lot of miles on these vehicles, and they do a great job, and they're short-staffed. They don't get paid that much, and they do, again, they serve us well. We burn through a mountain of tires. Could you imagine us going to Les Schwab and saying, we'd like to buy 240 sets of tires, and I'd like those tires at half the rate of inflation. That would not go over very well. We have to buy the stuff that the county needs at half the rate of inflation. It doesn't work. In fact, we wouldn't even be able to keep people employed if, only, if the, all the money we could get came at half the rate of three-year average of inflation. How do you think we make it? And somebody said the answer already. She said the answer. Exactly. If it was not for newly taxable property, we would go backwards. Even as there is prosperity in the county, if we did not have new growth, we would have to reduce our force. I don't just mean the, the sheriff's deputies. Everyone, there's almost 1,100 people that work for the county. 
We would have to go backwards each year because the whole world is moving forward at the rate of inflation, not half the rate of inflation. We wouldn't be, and basically to provide services, we have to buy gear and pay people. In both cases, we work in a market that's at the rate of inflation. If we paid half the rate of inflation to people or buying gear, it wouldn't work. Does that make sense? What if there were a sales tax? Would it bring more income? We're going to get there too. <laughs> <laughs> so the only way we make it is through new growth. If we didn't have new growth, we would go backwards each year. And to add some craziness to this puzzle, when there's new growth, yeah. say a new house is built, the cost of bringing services to that new home are not met entirely by the people who live in that house. They pay anywhere from 60 to 80 percent, depending on where the house is, of bringing services to that house. That's everything the county provides. Where, who do you think makes up the rest? What do you say? Everybody else. Everyone else. So in terms of keeping local government afloat, so the roads get plowed, we have a, a safe and predictable election system, sheriff's deputies are on the job, we have zoning, planning, animal control, the health department. To keep all that going, we have to have new growth because of that milk cap. And yet, new growth costs us all money in terms of property taxes. It is a vexing system. Gwen? Are you going to talk about the burden shift? Yes. Um, where did I write it down? The big shift. Oh. <laughs> I'm more I'm working, I'm working my way. So, I mentioned the milk cap. Right? That milk cap. I more than mentioned it. I kind of beat it to death. <laughs> so there's some other stuff. Let me give this last little piece. Somebody mentioned voted in levies. They are outside of the milk cap. So Missoula has a long, strong tradition of voting for things. What are some big things we voted for recently? Schools. Schools. Now, I'm not talking about school district. They, they have a different model, and Mr. Thane can totally describe that to you. I'm not, I don't know that system well enough to describe it. Yes, that's a fantastic one. Yes, those are the two big ones in the recent past. You nailed it. The Fort Missoula Regional Park and the library. And these two were bonds. Basically, what that means is the county borrowed a whole bunch of money to build these things, and we agreed to pay off that debt through taxation over 20 years. And at the end of 20 years, the bond is paid off. And we own Fort Missoula Regional Park. We own the library. Of course, these things have high maintenance costs, but, but that's how it works. So, voted in levies are not under the mill cap, they're outside of the mill cap. And that new growth, that newly taxable, that's also outside the mill cap for this year. Why do they have a mill cap? Okay, I'm gonna, all I can do is give my opinion on this. Mr. Thane might be able to help me if you get this wrong, but it feels like they have a mill cap because at one point, our state legislature was very concerned about property taxes and they thought, we have to put a cap on local government's ability to tax. Because if we don't, they'll just tax people to death. So we'll put a hard, fast limit on them, this milk cap. <laughs> and they did it because they were concerned that local governments were spending too much money. I believe this happened quite a long time ago, around when California had Proposition 13, a similar thing. It was sort of a national movement afoot. And it also really fits well with the majority party's view on government. It should be small and kind of hungry. Uh, they don't want a government, they don't want robust services. That's not what they believe in. So they want to, they kind of want to starve us. I think it was Josh, I thought it was Prop 105, which was voted in in the 80s, that was initiated in the Valley County for this cap to keep property taxes low. But could, Gwen, you could totally be correct. It's, it's been around for a really, really long time. Actually, I think you're right, because I heard three women from Pinesdale made it happen, and that's from the Valley County. Yeah. So, there's the milk cap. Now this next piece, I'm gonna slip into your tax bill a little bit. When you get your, your property tax bill, if you have a mortgage, it's just paid every month as part of escrow. If you own your house outright, you're writing a couple checks a year. If you're a renter, it's embedded in your rent. But if you live under a roof, and I hope everyone does, 
you're paying property taxes. Well, for the most part, people just write that check or their bank writes a check. And you don't dig into it. And that's okay. Everybody has busy lives. If you dig into it, you would find that in that property tax bill, some of it is the county. If you live in the city, some of it's the city, and some of it's the school district, and some of it's the state. We have a great feature on the Missoula County website called the Missoula County Property Tax Information System. And you can type in your address, or if you want to get stealthy, you can type in the address of your landlord. And you can find out what the property taxes are for that house. And then you can click on pie charts, and you can see a big pie chart of your taxes, how much go to the city, how much go to the county, how much go to the school district. And then you can click on the county piece, because we do a better job with this on the pie charts. You guys do great, but we have a really good pie chart. <laughs> and you can click on that pie chart, and you can find out where every dollar of your county taxes went to. And you can ask yourself, okay, I spent nine bucks, I'm a fair. Did I get hosed? Did I get nine dollars worth of value? Am I happy to provide that value for others? And you can ask yourself these questions. There's one piece of this that is, is, has become this year quite powerful, and that in the past I don't believe has been as powerful. And that is these 101 state mills. So now you know the value of a mill, right? Remember the value of a mill? So last year, mill value from Missoula County was like $275,000. This year, I'm going to go out on a limb and predict we're anywhere from 310 to 330, and I may be underselling there. That's a lot of increase. So, the county has a mill cap, right? So this year, everybody got a letter saying, your assessed value is $700,000. Probably went up by, the average for Missoula County was a 35% increase. Your assessed value went way up, which means your taxable value went way up, because you have a bigger number times your tax rate, right? Then when the county goes to assess mills, we can only go up to the mill cap. Remember that was the same number of mills we used last year, plus a, a tiny amount that'll get us to half the three out of inflation. Well, on that letter that you all got, it says, here's your assessed value, here's your taxable rate, here's last year's millage. So that's the number of mills last year. And then it says, this is your estimated tax liability. And that number was scary and horrible and just freaking terrible. said an estimate. I wish it said that. It didn't say that. It just said it's an estimate. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to say all that again. We got assessed value times the tax rate equals taxable value. Taxable value times last year's millage, number of mills, equals an estimate of this year's tax rate. Now, given what you know, that dude out of Why is that number so inaccurate. It's wildly inaccurate. Anybody have a guess? Remember I said there was a cap? We can only go up. We can only do what we did last year plus the half, half the three year average of inflation. If we took the same number of bills as we used last year and multiplied them times this year's, times this year's tax rate, we would crush the mill cap. We would go hundreds of yards beyond the mill cap. For the first time that I know of, we're actually going to assess fewer mills this year, probably 25% fewer mills than we did last year. I know this is complicated and is I'm bummed about it. Yes, oh my god, yes, if I could give you a good if I could give you a giant gold star, you absolutely 100% nailed it. Do you mind saying that again loudly? <laughs> I already forgot. Oh. <laughs> mill equals the mill value equals the mill value. Exactly. The value of a mill went up so much. If we used the same number of mills as we did last year, we would go way beyond the mill cap. Way beyond the mill cap. Why did you kick that one? We don't. We don't care if the state says <laughs> your mill cap you can't. Like it would be illegal. Not only was that number on your on that letter you got 
inaccurate and scary, it also was, it was offering a number out that was illegal. We literally could not do that. We would be in violation of the state law. I don't know what the penalty would be, but it wouldn't be good. We are going to levy this year, most likely, 25%-ish fewer mills than we did last year. Because if we were to use the same number of mills last year, which is what they put on your sheet, we would be going way beyond the mill cap. I just think an important point here is that Please. The, the mill cap is not number of mills, it's dollar value. Yes. So could you speak to that a little thanks, bit? So thanks, thanks a ton. That's piece. Yes, thank you. That's really good, that's really important. When I was saying before, a mill is like a, a, a chunk of foreign currency. It's worth a certain number of dollars. So that mill cap is the same number of mills as we did last year, plus an amount in dollars that equals half the rate of inflation. So if we used the same number of mills last year, we would go way beyond the amount of dollars that were brought in via last year's mills, plus half the three-year average of inflation. I know it's too many moving parts. I didn't make it up. It seems like one other misleading thing on that letter yeah. So it gives you this big number of, let's say, 35% up. Right. And then right next to it, it had a nice bar graph. Yep. It said, this is how much you spend, what percentage you spend on county, city, yeah. schools. So it made it seem like there was a 40% increase or 35% increase, and it was only going to be shared between these local entities. In the way... Yeah, it, 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 in yeah. that, it, where they have Missoula County with a big bar, there were a few things that weren't, that aren't pulled out of that bar. The voted in levies are really important. I don't believe they're in there. Other thing that's really important when looking at Missoula County compared to other counties, we only have one incorporated city, Missoula. Most, in fact, all the other major urban counties have multiple incorporated cities. Those incorporated cities and towns provide a whole bunch of services for themselves. Their counties don't provide them for them. Does that make sense? So. Though we are, I think, number two behind Yellowstone County, and I don't know this for sure, but I think it's right, and I wanted to figure it out today and I didn't have time. We may actually be the biggest county in terms of number of people that we serve. So if you take 120,000 minus, what is it, 80,000, somewhere in there in the city, that's 40,000 in the county. If you look at Yellowstone County and subtract Billings and Laurel and the other incorporated places in Yellowstone County, my guess is we're bigger. So we provide more services. And like I was saying on growth, the more houses you provide services to, the more taxes. So that's, that's a big piece of it. So that letter you got, we all got, I got one too. Scary, inaccurate, and talking about a possibility that's actually illegal. So, and Mr. Thane might be able to help. The language on that letter, is that DOR policy or is that in statute? It's statutorily required, but uh, the Interim Revenue Committee is going to take a look at that. Okay. This Thank is you. a real anomaly this year. It is totally an anomaly. And because I'm not yet throwing the DOR under the bus. If we were to go back a few years ago and you got that notice that said, this is your home value, this is your taxable value, this is last year's millage, this is an estimated tax liability, it'd be pretty accurate, it'd be pretty good. It's only because we are in wildly unusual and uncharted times, this 35% increase. And in Missoula, we weren't even the biggest by a long shot. We were in the middle of the pack. And interestingly enough, the, the high growth counties, you could used to be able to just make a line at the mountains. You go west, high growth, east, not so much, except for Yellowstone County, we're building this. That line shifted east this year, and a whole bunch of counties, Jefferson County, Fergus County, had numbers like 40% growth. Now when you look at meeting home price in those places, they're a long ways from us. They're kind of slowly catching up. But this real estate intensity is no longer confined to west of the mountains. It jumped east a full notch. Looking at the map was pretty, pretty powerful. Okay. I mentioned this 101 state mills, that this is a really big deal. And I saved it for now because I wanted to get that mill cap solidly in your heads. <laughs> as best as <laughs> it. I'm sorry. I know it's complicated. She's got it. She's got it, yeah. yeah.
But we should do a whole lot. I want to finish this piece up. We'll do, do some more questions because I really want everybody to understand this best. And please jump in if I get it wrong. <laughs> because of that mill cap, we are going to levy fewer mills this year than last year because the mill value is so much higher. We have to levy fewer mills. The state, they levy in your property tax 101 mills. That doesn't go down because of a mill cap. It doesn't matter that the mill value is going to be like 35% higher than it was last year. It's still the same number. And it's a really big deal. Now, 95 of those 101 mills go to school equalization. Again, correct me if I get it wrong, my understanding that this is so that if you if you live in Fallon County and you don't have a big tax base, you want to make sure that your school is as high quality as schools in Missoula County. So you get your money from your tax base plus this chunk of money that's going to come from the state to equalize these schools to make them all pretty good. I mean, it's a great idea. I'm not speaking out against it at all. 95 mills for school equalization, 6 mills for the state university system. I am a poster child for the state. Well, I don't know if they would want to advertise me. <laughs> I am a product of our state university system, a proud alum, and I, and I taught to them for 21 years, so I'm all in on that. So I'm psyched they get six mills. What I don't like is that this year, the value of a mill has skyrocketed. It would be the most responsible thing for the state to say, oh, given that the value of mills are so high, we're not going to use 101 mills this year. We're going to use 75. Because we want the amount you, the taxpayer, that has to pay only to go up like, you know, five, six percent. Instead, they're going to crush you right here with 35 percent. And if you live in Gallatin County, you're going up 50 percent on those 101 bills. Sir? I'd offer one clarification. Please. That is, uh, House Bill 580 passed, recognizing there would be a windfall in the 95 mills. House Bill 580 created a special revenue account. The 95 mills will flow into that. And as it's redistributed, county retirement for schools and other uh, locally levied property taxes will be reduced because of the infusion of that money that's in the special revenue account for the 95 mills. So who's going to get that money? The schools, the county schools. So some of it will go back to the schools. Yes, and it will lower our local property tax burden for schools. For schools. But not for the county. Not, for, not the county. for the city. Not so a piece of it is better on the schools, but there's a big three, city, county, and school. But I believe that that's a great idea. And I think the state should lower this number commensurate to the level of increase in mill value. Instead, what Dan Bucks told me today, name dropping Dan Bucks because he was an eight year director of the Department of Revenue. He said this was going to net a new $81 million for the state. $81 million. And he also pointed out that the state had passed a number of laws, and I have them on the sheet. I hate notes, but I have, I'd have to look. You make to grab them off. He said the state passed a handful of laws that were going to lower income taxes for people who earned the most money, and lower capital gains taxes for people who, who made the most money without working. And that this $81 million, besides helping teacher retirement, was going to backfill. So our state decided to give a tax break to the wealthiest among us, and then tax extra heavy regular people, and use that money to backfill. What kind of yeah. Well, I'm going to stick with this school equalization. Yeah. I, that I can understand the concept of that, right? But that fund is not necessarily, and maybe you can speak to this more, but that fund is not necessarily earmarked all for schools. I mean, so what, they filter that into, like, how does, can you? So what Dan told me, and you, we go, I'm just going to parrot what Dan told me today, was this is the base level for school equalization, and if they get more money than they need, they can do other things with it. He made it sound like they're going to cover their needs and then can kind of slosh it around. But uh, right now it goes into the state general fund. Now it's all going into a special reserve account that will be redistributed primarily for school funding. And even though we don't think of Missoula as needing school equalization,
equalization dollars, we actually receive those equalization dollars. So the net impact should be that Missoula County Public Schools and the surrounding district should have to levy fewer mills because they'll get some infusion of state dollars. Again, yeah, site for the schools, not for the city and county, and I don't think any of us should be subsidizing a reduction in tax liability for the wealthiest among us or folks who earn money through capital gains. And I do like business. What's the timeline for redistribution of those funds? Uh, we'll have the first tax collections in November and it'll be for the next tax year, 2024. Okay, we got three, the school district, the city, and the county. So I think the school district, I think the state could have achieved that goal and still reduced this number, given that the mill value is so high and not decided to cut tax and income taxes for the wealthiest among us. I think we are subsidizing the tax break for super wealthy people. <laughs> so there's another piece of this that I feel like I feel like we're in like upside down land here. So, so this, when the when the state's doing this, the two thirds of it, I'll say a third of the school district, the two thirds of this. The state is actually saying, yeah, let's, let's do that more property taxes. Let's bring on the taxes. And this is from the party who's all anti-tax. And then you have Democrats recently calling for a special session of the legislature to adjust these numbers, this tax rate, to bring down residential property taxes. It's all upside down. The Democrats are asking to lower taxes, and the Republicans are saying, no, let's make sure taxes stay high. It's all, and meanwhile, they point at me and Dave and Juan and my friends um, Amber and Gwen and everybody else in the city council and the mayor and saying, your guys' spending is out of control. Your spending is out of control. And I'll tell you, I gave you the answer to this question already. How is that impossible? It is impossible for our spending to be out. Literally, legally impossible. Why is that? Yes, nice job, Melody. The milk cap. The milk cap. And some, some kind of shystery people in the legislature, they came to a MACO meeting, MACO's Montana Association of Counties. I do not know state government all that well, but I can speak to MACO and the Montana Association of Counties. And they came to our meeting and said, Fergus County is the worst among us. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Spending went up by 42%. Missoula County, double digit increase in spending. Yeah, we got a shit ton of ARPA money. We also competed successfully for a massive federal infrastructure grant in the Swatupkin and Build area. We put in sewer, water, road grid, enough infrastructure backbone to set the stage for development for 6,000 units of housing, the next 20,000 Missoulians. Should we not have done that because our spending went up? It wasn't taxes that went up, we got a massive federal grant. Fergus County got a whole bunch of money because, oh, uh, Fergus County and Beaverhead County got a bunch of money from new energy projects that paid a lot in property taxes. They spent that money on things like bridges, road repair, culverts, the kind of thing you do in, in rural Montana. Is that just out of control? Terrible spending. <laughs> it's just the easiest thing to do to say your spending is out of control and really, really difficult to try and describe this crap. Go ahead. So along the same thread of the 101 state mills, which will not be adjusted for the cap, but will be full value, and then, okay, yep. great, some will go to the school, if that's helpful, but still, it will be significant. On significant. $81 million. But we have a situation where Missoula has voted stuff in. Sometimes we vote in a general obligation bond. That's outside of the cap. Right. We pay that down. Right. But sometimes we vote in a mill levy. Yep. So we've done that. Missoula Aging Services last year. Mountain line, things like this, those will go up the full amount and they're outside of the cap and they're good entities, but that's going to translate to being on the tax bill, correct? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. Is significant. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very real. So I wanted to talk about these the tax rate a bit. You brought this up. Because historically, and I learned this from Dan Bucks, over the last 40 years or so, when Okay. Over the last 40 years or so, when real estate values have gone up, in a bipartisan way, the state legislature has decided 
to turn these dials down. So imagine somebody sitting at a soundboard in a studio and they got the bass and the treble and the balance and all kinds of, you, these guys in the legislature could turn that down. They could say, oh my gosh, home values went up 35% in two years. We're gonna make this 1.89 number for commercial, 1.5, and we're gonna take the residential number at 1.35 and bring it down to 0.95. Because it's ridiculous. We're not gonna crush people. We're, we're gonna turn it down. They have always done that. This is according to Dan Bucks, eight years of director of the Department of Revenue. He told me this this morning. First time in 40 years they did not do it. And these are the folks who don't like taxes. They must like property taxes. Or they must like saying, your guys' spending is out of control. So, and tell me if I, if I get this correct, the Dems who were pushing for a special session wanted these dials turned down. Did I get that right? Yeah, I'm just curious. My understanding, maybe you could address this to dispel a little bit of misunderstanding. Um, I, don't, I think it was the Bureau of Business and Economic Research did the study that showed that all the seven biggest cities in Montana, maybe the five biggest, but I think it was seven, that the per capita of tax burden on uh, citizens of those cities was about the same. Mm -hmm. And that Missoula isn't Correct. Uh, so so much higher than the others. Yeah. So that the conservative cities, their tax uh, burden for, per yeah, capita right. is about the same as this uh, liberal bubble that we live in. You You're know? totally right. And so in 2017, and I'm, gonna, I'm speaking to this, which sounds like a broad side, but I'm speaking to exactly what you just said. Before 2017, if you, the city or a county, didn't use all the mills that you wanted, that you could legally use. You could bank them. You could take those mills and put them in a mill bank. And then you could go over your mill cap the next year. You could bank those mills and use them later. You were going to be rewarded for being through. Missoula County still has two mills in our mill bank from way back 2017 and prior. We had, I think, the most robust mill bank in the state. Right up, right up there anyway, for sure among the urban counties. We did a really good job. Yellowstone County, they're the poster child for our legislature. Why don't you be like Yellowstone County? They max out their mills every year. Every single year, max taxation, and then they would take the money they don't use and bank it for a rainy day fund. So that's one strategy, but it, it involves some pain on taxpayers. Missoula County, the Blue County, we were actually far thriftier. And we believe that if we had a robust mill bank, it would improve our bond rating. Because we went to the lot of money for a new library, the bond rating people would say, oh look, they have more mills to use than they have space under the mill cap. They have plenty of theoretical taxation they can make use of if they need money, so we'll give them a really good bond rating. And that was important to us for a long time. So this makes as much sense as it would for someone who has a house. I don't have a house. I can buy a house right now for sure. Um, so, like, I'm a renter, I've been a renter yeah. for three years now. How does that translate, like, for the college population? Because, like, inherently, yeah. great question. how does all of this look? Great, like, great okay. question. So, whoever owns your house will see a property tax increase. I'm going to guess roughly the rate of inflation from the city, roughly the rate of inflation from the county, probably a similar thing from the school district. The state is going to be a big hammer on your neck, your landlord's going to look at that and be like, whoa, I need to pay $600 more this year than I did last year. I've got this nice person renting and maybe one of the duplex next. I, I, I can't eat it. I'm, uh, I need this money to pay the mortgage. So I'm just going to pass this on to the tenants. That makes sense. Yeah. So like, as a landlord, like, with, like say you have like, several different properties. Yeah. So all of those show up, including like, probably the house. Absolutely. And, and I know a lot of people who are mom and pop landlords, and I am in no way saying if you're a landlord, you're a bad person. I mean, I would rather see somebody invest their money in housing than the stock market. Not just because they get greater gains, just you're providing housing for people, which is a good thing. And the folks I know who do this are super aware that having a good tenant is way better than trying to maximize dollar value all the time. Steady, 
is, a, is really important. Turnover is really rough. So they're going to have lots of inner turmoil about how much of this tax increase do we add to the rent for this nice person and how much do we, can we split it with them? Do we feather it in over two years? What do we do? It's tricky. Brittany, do you have a, anything to say to that as a person who works in that world? Like, I think, I think you're right, yeah. The, the cost is probably going to be less on the tenants. Yeah, it's just tough. So, Josh, you've had uh, some experiences in the Swan yeah, yeah, Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's okay. Took the mask off. Yeah. yeah. You've had some experiences in the Swan Valley yeah. recently. Yeah. And we're talking 35% or so here in the Missoula area. Our folks in the Swan Valley, 60 to 80%. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yep. And I guarantee you, real estate's gone up in the Swan Valley. Yeah. It hadn't gone up 80% over a two year period. That's ridiculous. How, how do we address that just in terms of their appraisal number has got to be way off? I mean, if they said, hey, it went up 40% in the Swan Valley, that'd be hard to argue with. But 75 to 80% in the Swan Valley doesn't make sense. Oh, you're going to have to, what was the number of the AB 26? AB 26. And you only have 30 days from getting your notice to file that. Right. So. so you got to appeal. So and and I, hear, I hear you. And what's tough is we, I've spent an inordinate amount of time in this one because they're really mad at us. And I just cannot stand not being successful in something. So I just keep going back because I cannot, I can't stomach not doing a good job. So they're just mad as hell at Missoula County. And when they see those numbers, they are mad as hell at me and David Wan. Because the state's on their team. They're on the red team, we're on the blue team. Yeah. So obviously the state's in the right, and we are squandering their hard-earned dollars to pay for you know, five course meals for homeless people. That's, 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 the, that's, what, that's the word up there. Uh, it's really, really tough, and I agree with you, and I think you just gotta appeal yeah. and, and push back. And also, this, and then this, I'm gonna go up and go up there again in, in another couple of weeks. They should expect an increase from the county that looks about the level of inflation. Mm -hmm. That's about how much the yeah. county taxes are going to go. Their state taxes are going to go up that 60%, 50%, or whatever. That, that's where, and those are the folks who are on their team who had the opportunity to reduce this and did not. Yeah. I'll, I'll help carry that message up there. Thank <laughs> you. And, and the other, other piece, other piece that's really rough for our rural residents is they, rural, uh, we're having, Diversity in Missoula County, unfortunately, is, is pretty much rural urban. I know there's lots of other types, but the rural urban is just pronounced. And people have really different concerns. I know there's more to it than that. I don't mean to be insulting to anyone. That's just the one that I feel all the time in my job. And the folks who live in rural areas really have different sets of concerns, different values, and made different life choices. And they're just mad as hell that they pay taxes to an entity that is not in alignment with those values and those choices. And it's really, really hard on them and you have to have a lot of empathy for them. And we need to figure out collectively, I know it's on me and David and Juan, but all of us, how to make it so we're one place, we're not so freaking divided. Okay, I had some more here on the big shift, but I want to make sure everybody remains awake. Is it advantageous to have a large county? Or can you see it off? We mean large in area costs us money. Yeah, I mean, so I offer that up to the folks in Condon because they're so mad. They should just be their own town and then they can have their own police force, their own road department, their own health department, their own building department, and they wouldn't have to fuss with Missoula anymore because they don't like us one little bit. It would cost them money, but they would gain autonomy and they would have to decide maybe the expense is worth the autonomy or, or maybe not. I mean, it's something they have to wrestle with. But having a really big county and area is very expensive. It's really tough. Yeah, it's really tough. Yeah, and I think I learned a little communications lesson, one of many lessons. We have done a press conference on this with folks from the school district and the city. I think it's the first time the three entities have done a, done a press conference together. We did a podcast. We've done letters to the editor, uh, newspaper articles, information up on our Missoula County Voice. We've tried hard, and I feel like we have a really talented communications team. And I think we've probably reached barely double digits. The DOR sends out one letter, and everyone knows. Like, holy crap, snail mail is the way to get the word out. <laughs> really? Because you only got one mailbox. And 
there's a bazillion things on your phone to look at, and Missoula County is number one bazillion and two. <laughs> so I, I think we're going to think hard about our next communication strategies using the mail, because people seem to open the mail. Okay, do you want me to do the big shift, or do you want to do it? We are done. Big shift. Okay, here goes on the big shift. So way back in the 90s, I lived here, raising small children back then. There wasn't much anger about property taxes. I mean, nobody likes property taxes, but nothing like the anger we have right now. And it's because Missoula County was a really different place back then. We had a tax system that matched our economy. So if we go back into the mid-90s, we had four mills that were big with Smurfit's huge. All that beautiful school out in Frenchtown, that's because of Smurfit. Four big mills that had big footprints. And way back then, the tax burdens, if you take the total amount of taxes paid, 60% of it came from that commercial industrial sector. 40% came from residents. And at that same time, home values were pretty low. Not just low compared to where they are now, but they were low nationally. So a few months ago, I should have checked today, but a few months ago I looked, Brittany may know the answer to this, median home value in Missoula was 100, almost 150% of median home value nationally. That means, that means it's one and a half times as expensive to buy a house here. Back in mid-90s, you could sell your house in any populated area and move to Missoula and score because your money went so much farther. So mid-90s, tax burden 60% industrial, commercial, 40% residential, and home values were low. And we also didn't have that big of a tourist economy. Okay, so why am I bringing up tourists? How does, how do tourists, why does the tourism play into this? Because they deteriorate the infrastructure and they don't get taxed. Yes, you nailed it. <laughs> Melody, yeah. that's like your third right answer. <laughs> yeah, they use our services and don't pay for them. And please don't make a mistake, I am not saying tourism is bad or tourists as people are bad. This is a structural thing. I welcome our guests. They put a lot of money in the local economy. But they drive on our roads, they use 911, they interact with people who are products of our excellent and high functioning public school system, and they don't pay for any of those things. And it's not because they're tight ones, it's because they have no opportunity to pay for it. So mid-90s, we didn't really have many tourists. Last year, we had 3.5 million tourists come to Missoula County. We have 120,000 residents. So I gotta say those numbers again, because these thoughts were out. 3.5 million tourists, 120,000 residents. Average length of stay, anyone want to take a guess? Three, four days. Yeah, that's what I would have guessed. Six and a half days. That's from the Institute for Tourism and Recreation Research. That's where I got both these numbers. That means that people are coming to Missoula for vacation. It's a really nice place. People come here for vacation for all the reasons we live here. Biking, hiking. Rock climbing, boating, an awesome downtown, wonderful bike trails, a great culture, beautiful views, friendly people, a general informalness, but friendly. It's just a really, really great place. When you go to other places, if you haven't been to one, go to another one. Like, this one's really nice. <laughs> well, we made it nice in due, due in large part by creating these amenities with tax dollars. And our tourists do not pay for them. 3.5 million and they're here for six and a half days. Holy moly. Well, way back in the 90s, minimal tourists, low home values, and the burden of taxes was squarely on the shoulders of industry and commercial. And it was kind of okay. Well, you know where we are now. Well, industry and commercial, they do 40%, now residents do 60%. And our home values are one and a half times national home values. And we have three and a half million tourists, and the state that had this great tradition of turning these dials down when they got too high, decided this year to leave them up. It's been a big shift. And now people are really mad. I hope that that anger 
becomes creative and we look at some solutions like making a tax system that matches our current economy. We have a lot of tourists. We got to figure out how to, to make it so tourists pay for the services they use. And I'm not saying we have to have a sales tax on groceries and prescriptions. I'm just saying we should figure out a way. I'm not going to say no the way. We should figure out a way for tourists to pay for the services they use. Like a gas tax? We did that one. Yeah. 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 They took it away, man. <laughs> That was, my, that was my project, so it really hurt me. We don't have it anymore? We don't have it anymore. Why? The legislature makes it. They took it away. Yeah. Yes, that was a couple of years ago. In 2019, we went and asked for more of the share of the state gas tax, and they said, you know, you guys want more money, do your own. It's right here in law, make your own. And we did, and then in 2021, they passed, and then in 2021, they took it away. We had it for six months. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's probably winter, so we didn't get it. Yeah. More of a question for Mark, but I'm from Whitefish, where they passed in 1996. Oh, this is a great thing. Yeah. yeah. And my mom's house is worth five times mine, and she pays less than property tax, so like yeah. 100% has worked. And I know it's got a limit of 5,500 people. How open? I know they're not very open, but if that's like more than. Do you mind explaining that? 5,500, just so all these people would know? Oh, yeah. Know. So.
and this is how much you get to spend on the health department, and we don't want you to have a building department anymore, so we'll give you this money for something else, and we will just become pawns of the state with that autonomy on how we spend our money, taking away the same thing in the city too. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous they're gonna go either one of those two ways. I doubt they're gonna say, oh great, we're gonna lower property taxes, and the sales tax money can go back to this jurisdiction from whence it came, and local governments can march off into the sunset with low property taxes and high quality services. I don't think that's what they want to do. Oh, and I can barely see it to the sun. How come Montana doesn't have a sales tax? All right. Why does Montana not have a sales tax? I think it hasn't been perceived as necessary in the past. As you referenced, I think people were comfortable with their property tax bill. Yeah. Nobody complains about income tax because it's largely done through withholding on your payroll. It's so low, um, too. And that's the same to say for a long time. I think uh, maybe these are different times. Uh, I don't know if uh, there will be a method of capitalizing on tourism dollars, but that's an interesting question. Twelve and a half million in the state. Been voted down three or four times. Constitution. Yeah. Yeah, there's a strong Montana rule. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I also am really aware that we have some diversity in the economies of our different counties. And if you're in Fallon County, a tourist tax doesn't make any sense. If you're in Missoula County, it makes a ton of sense, which is why I like the local option. If we were a monolith, it'd be one thing. But these counties are really different, and they should have the option. I mean, really, this is about local control, which is interesting. The legislature loves to shake their fist in D.C. Massachusetts is in Montana. But then why are we Fallon County? Why is Fergus County and, and why are Fergus County and Gallup County treated the same way? They're really, really different places. All right, I feel like I have talked more at you than you actually need. That's great. All right, so if, there, if we can do one more question, or we can just release you to the business of your party. Okay. Josh, not a question, just yeah. an announcement. Sure. I, I've heard that tomorrow. Oh, thank you. I forgot to do that. Thank you. Okay. Three o'clock at the Hilton Garden Inn, the Department of Revenue is doing a town hall on all this. I think those will be, they'll be different, <laughs> but they're going to talk about all this. I got to add this little chunk of information, and maybe. You can help me on this one too. Uh, they had scheduled 59 town halls across the state. Some places they're going twice. And Missoula did not make the list. <laughs> and we are a massive economic engine for the state. Why is it that they have I, I, I don't know. If we were lucky to get them, they said no, they wouldn't come. We had basically we had to use we had to use the collective muscle of our legislative delegation. Thank you. And our city and county, I don't know if they listen to us much, but I think they listen to you guys. And they told us they had security concerns. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's why it's the deer. It's the deer. It's the deer. It's the urban deer. It's the urban deer. That's the problem. I'm going to bring that up. It's the deer. Isn't it? It's the deer. It's the deer. So, but if for any of you who go, I just have to add this little piece. The Department of Revenue is following the law that the legislature laid out for them. So if you don't like any of this, and I, there's a lot not to like, it's not their fault. They are doing what they've been directed to do, and those folks are dutiful and trying hard, and they're going to answer questions and do their darndest. The legislature is 100% to blame. They write the rules, we play by the rules, DOR enforces the rules. So we, we, need, a, we need the legislature to take a different tack. And I have no idea. <laughs> but, but you might, I don't know how we would make that happen. I think helping people to understand who voted for what and, and how it impacts them. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, the real voting records on the real things that actually... These guys had the chance to turn these dials down. They had the chance to lower this number. And they yeah. took a pass. They chose to tax people more. 